All right, guys, um, that's the season. That is the season. The Super Bowl is over, and the Chiefs are your champions. So, obviously, didn't really have a dog in this fight. I don't. I didn't really care who won. I respected both teams. I just wanted to see a good game, and I got 98% of a good game. So, that's pretty good, right? I, I, can, I can definitely take that. I can definitely say that is a victory for me as somebody who is viewing impartially. But now that the game is over, now that the season's over, I do like to take a look at games like this and say, okay, what can we learn? As Seahawks fans, what can we learn from a game like this? And last year, I was talking about some of the things that we could learn from that Super Bowl, the Bengals and the Rams. And I definitely pulled a few things out of that. But what can we learn from this Super Bowl? I don't think the things that you can learn are quite as profound, but I find them interesting anyway. So I want to go through some stuff concerning this Super Bowl before we put it in the rearview mirror and move on from it, go further into the offseason. So first of all, I'm going to address the uh, elephant in the room here. Yes, that was a terrible game deciding call. Whoever threw that flag should lose their job immediately. You're going to decide the Super Bowl on a play when the guy's jersey didn't even move, when a guy's resting his hand on, like, no, no, absolutely not. And I hate to say it, to me, that call was so obviously bad and so obviously massively impactful on the result of this game that it was kind of hard for me to fully appreciate how good this game was when it was over. I was just like, wow, really? You're ri So, yeah, I'd count me among the people who thinks the way that game ended was complete garbage. And um, I can't blame any Eagles fans out there for being really, really unhappy with the way that turned out. Like, yeah, you probably should be. I'd be unhappy, too. I'd be more than unhappy. You guys don't want to see me making the video that I'm going to have to make if the Seahawks ever lose a Super Bowl because of something like that. So, yeah, elephant in the room addressed. Um, second of all, I also want to say real quick, I've been uploading videos all day, which didn't work out great because, like, I uploaded a video a couple hours ago as the Super Bowl was starting to heat up at the end when the Chiefs really started to get going, and very few people have seen that video. So, if you haven't seen my many uploads today, just know that they're there. I've been talking about linebackers basically all day. So um, if you miss those videos because you were busy with Super Bowl stuff, just know that they are there and they can be viewed at any time. All right, so let's get the obvious stuff out of the way. And this stuff doesn't really have anything to do with learning anything. It has to do more with just factual stuff. Andy Reid slander is dead, which is probably my favorite thing to come out of this result. Even though I didn't care for the way the game ended, even though that really sullied things in my mind, I have to admit, it coming down to a really, really, really soft and weak call like that. Um, Andy Reid's slander is dead. I don't want to hear anything negative about this dude ever, especially the way it went down today. Patrick Mahomes' slander should be dead. Not that there was really a whole lot of that going on, especially after the season he just had, uh, being the best player in the league by far with no Tyreek Hill. Um, yeah, I, I think the Mahomes slander was dead anyway, but Andy Reid's always been a guy who's had detractors, people saying, oh, he's overrated, oh, he's not that good, oh, this, um, um, he's a choker, he can't get it done in the playoffs. I think that's dead now. He found a way to win a game against what I think was the best team in the league the whole season with gimpy Patrick Mahomes who, by the way, threw for less than 200 yards in this game. The, the dude did not play one of his best games, not even close. He played a good game. He had to overcome a lot in this game. He ended up playing very well, but it wasn't like the running game blew up. The running game didn't go off for 250 yards. The running game was good. Like, Pacheo had a good game. McKinnon added some nice big plays. But... It wasn't carrying the team to touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. And yes, they got a bit of a break with the fumble from Jalen Hurts turning into free points and the punt return from Kadarius Toney setting up a short-range short touchdown, of course. 
Uh, that helped the offense tremendously. But at the end of the day, Andy Reid was facing an elite defense, one of the best defenses in the league this year, with a gimpy quarterback. Um, he had traded his number one receiver the previous offseason, which was supposed to drastically change the way that their offense was going to work. And it didn't matter. He found a way to not only win the game, but come from behind, make that elite defense look stupid, and basically play perfect football in the entire second half. Even if you take away the short, yard, the, uh, short field touchdown and the defensive touchdown, you're still talking about a really impressive performance from this Chiefs offense against a great defense with Mahomes spending part of this game limping around out there, clearly not physically right. Andy Reid found a way to get it done anyway, so the slander against Andy Reid is dead, which I like. But going into that, looking at this game, I think one thing that really needs to be kept in mind as a Seahawks fan, offense matters. Offense matters a lot. The Philadelphia Eagles had, in my opinion, the best defense in the league this year. They had one of the best pass rushes of all time, Hassan Reddick, Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave. They were getting good play out of guys at the linebacker position. Their secondary had multiple uh, Pro Bowl caliber players in Slay and Bradbury and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Um, you know, they spent their top pick on a Jordan Davis to come in and shore up the run defense. It was a fantastic defense. And the Chiefs, thin at receiver, not a whole lot going on at the running back position. By the way, remember Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, I know everyone's kind of forgotten about him now, inactive. Um, you've only done, you, you haven't fully replaced Tyreek Hill yet. Pat Mahomes, not healthy, made that defense completely irrelevant. That Eagles defense, one of the best in the league, completely dominated the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, was made irrelevant. They may as well have been sitting on the ground at the snap every play in the second half for as effective as they were. Everything the Chiefs wanted to do and needed to do, they did. So what I mean to say here is that if you're a Seahawks fan who is looking at this in a very binary fashion and you're thinking, okay, this offseason, defense, 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 use all our picks on defense, spend all our money on defense, 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 defense. No. This is an offensive league now. If that Super Bowl didn't prove it to you, then I don't think anything will. 38 to 35, and one team that had the elite defense just got completely steamrolled. The days of the Legion of Boom completely shutting down the Broncos, the greatest offense of all time, that's not so easy anymore. That that doesn't that doesn't come. I mean, this Eagles pass rush legitimately is one of the best pass rushes in the history of the league. They had like 78 sacks this year, which is third all time. So deep, so many really good pass rushers on that team. They didn't touch Mahomes, but like once. They didn't sack him once, by the way, either. They they barely touched the dude. So the Kansas City Chiefs, despite their shortcomings on that offense, playing with an injured quarterback, playing without a true number one wide receiver, did the dirty on him. And as we move into this offseason, that would be one thing I would recommend to Seahawks fans. You've spent all this time building the defense, the defense, the defense, the defense. If you ignore the offense, that is what that gets you. A situation where your defense, no matter how great you build it, still gets run over. So don't forget to build the offense too. Because if you can get an offense like what the Chiefs have, you can make that great Philly defense irrelevant. And for most of that game, that's what they did. <laughs> so I think that game was kind of representative of what the league is headed towards going to be harder and harder to play D. I mean, the decisive play of the Super Bowl was a play where James Bradbury is basically just resting his hand on the receiver, just resting his hand, and the ref decides, I'm going to decide the Super Bowl because he was resting his hand on the dude's back. <laughs> like, uh, that that's another indication of the fact that this is where the league is headed. This is what the league wants. So that would be my takeaway number one. Offense matters. Just because you're looking at the Seahawks last year and saying we had a really good offense and a really bad defense, therefore all the resources get dumped into the defense, no.
Got to build the offense too. It might be more important to build the offense. It might be more important to turn our number nine offense from 2022 into a top five offense in 2023, however you have to do that. So that's number one. Number two, here's another thing that's dead, and I don't want to hear about this anymore. The meme about how, oh, you can't pay a quarterback too much money or you're not going to win the Super Bowl. Nobody wins the Super Bowl when they give the quarterback too much money. Dead. I don't want to hear it anymore. Last two teams to win the Super Bowl. Kansas City Chiefs, Pat Mahomes' cap hit, almost $36 million. And a lot of people have praised the Chiefs for putting this deal together in a way that it's not unreasonable. And yes, they have done that. But it's still over 17% of the cap. And the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to definitely point to that and say, hey, if they did it, other teams can do it too. And this one is even bigger. Last year, the Los Angeles Rams that won the Super Bowl. $20 million cap hit on Stafford, which is close to 11%. And let's not forget, let's not forget the Stafford tax, as I like to call it, the Jared Goff cap hit of almost $25 million, which was over 13%. So you put those two together, nearly a quarter of the Rams' salary cap the year they won the Super Bowl was going to either Stafford or the guy they had to trade to get Stafford in Goff. So that is a monster cap at almost $45 million going towards effectively your quarterback. So as far as I'm concerned, this... Um, shallow, non-probative analysis of, oh, we're paying the quarterback too much money, therefore we're not going to win the Super Bowl, gone. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear it from the P uh, Seahawks fans, and I don't want to hear it from the team. So if we get to a point where we have the super expensive quarterback again, the really hyper elite $50, $60 million year quarterback, whatever it's going to turn into, I don't want to hear this team refuse to spend money, refuse to go out and do anything because, oh, we, you know, the quarterback, man, we got to pay the quarterback, the quarterback taking, all, no, <laughs> that's not how things work anymore. And I don't want to hear it from the fans either. I don't want to hear this thing about how we can't pay the quarterback, man. I don't care how good he is. If you pay the quarterback, you're not going to be able to build a team. Yes, you can. You just have to do it the right way. You have to draft well. You have to spend wisely. You have to take chances. You have to be willing to structure things in unconventional ways. But you can do it. The last two teams to win a Super Bowl now have done it. So the meme is dead as far as I'm concerned. That meme, throw it away. It's a meme. Well, actually, it's a meme now. Maybe you can keep it as a meme. Just understand that it's a meme. And it's not real anymore. It doesn't exist. Two teams in a row now. Now, obviously, you have to get the right quarterback. Pat Mahomes is special, one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history already. But is Matt Stafford special? Is he one of the top ten? No, he's just a really good quarterback. Moments of greatness, moments of just kind of like, eh. He's just another really good quarterback in this league that, that's full of them. But the Rams were able to build around him despite paying him $20 million and paying Jared Goff $25 million in dead money in order for them to bring on Matt Stafford. So those are the things that I'm taking away from this Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs, who are paying their quarterback almost $36 million against the cap this year, just beat a team that is paying their quarterback less than a million. And honestly, you could argue that that quarterback played better than Pat Mahomes. I don't know if he did. He may have. 300 passing yards, leads his team in rushing, scores four touchdowns. That's possible. And the Chiefs still found a way to win. They didn't load up on all the greatest defensive players. They didn't try to build the greatest defense of all time. They have a collection of guys who are pretty good, and they hope that it's going to be enough to get through. And twice now in the last four years, it has been good enough. So keep an open mind. There's no one right way to make an omelet here. The Chiefs have done it their way. Last year, the Rams did it their way. Years before, we've seen the Bucks do it. We've seen um, the, the Patriots do it. We've seen the Eagles do it uh, with um, Nick Foles years ago. Many different ways to build a Super Bowl caliber team. So those are the lessons that I'm taking away from this Super Bowl. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys tonight on Twitch. Go Hawks. 
learn the right lessons from the rest of the league.